Okay, for our, uh, for our first uh, talk, I'm very pleased to introduce Kate Preston with her presentation on the Zodiac. Uh, and the unusual one she highlights tonight is depicted in the landscape in the north of England. Upon a known ley line lie representations of this celestial Zodiac running through Lanc Lancashire, Manchester and Cheshire, which gives it its name, the La Manche Zodiac. Kate covers its discovery and its importance amongst several other terrestrial zodiacs in Britain. Please welcome Kate Preston. <coughs> Thank you. Let me get this thing cranked up again. Keeps going into safe mode. There we go. Okay. Um, most of you know me from, you've seen me around, so uh, let's crack on. Okay, the well, La Manche Zodiac. Have you ever wondered why some British country roads, lanes, tracks, and whatever, they twist and turn all the way around? They, they don't really um, relate to the local terrain. And if you look into the, if you look at any map, you can quite often see shapes and figures in the in the tracks, paths, roads, sometimes even river banks. And several parts of England, they found terrestrial zodiacs, that's where the 12 signs of the zodiac are sort of marked out in, in the local landscape. Obviously the first one to be discovered was um, by Catherine Mortwood at Glastonbury in the 1920s. That's the Glastonbury zodiac. You can clearly see some of the shapes of the, um, of the different figures that make up the 12 signs of the zodiac. Um, also there's a dog at the edge of it there. Most, most zodiacs that, I've, that I know of seem to have a representation of the dog. It could be the representation of Cerberus, the uh, guardian of the underworld, or in some texts, the lower heavens. So this could be what it refers to. Okay, there have been several other zodiacs discovered, but mine, this, one, this particular one, it's the largest known, and it's unique in that instead of being in a sort of oval or circular shape. It stretches across the landscape in a sort of wavy pattern, as you can see from the map over there. Thanks. You can see it stretches from there all the way down, right across down to there. From Garstang, all the way down to the Cheshire-Staffordshire border. Okay, I've called it the La Manche Zodiac because the three modern counties that pass us through are Lancashire. Where is it? Lancashire, Greater Manchester, and Cheshire. As I've said, most of them are either circular or elliptical, but this one is completely unique. And the, the 12 signs, they're in the correct sequence, and they have both the stars and the shapes representing, which, again, is fairly rare. Some, most zodiacs either have the stars represented or the shapes, very rarely both. And they seem to um, center on Round Loaf, which is there, which is a major lay center. There's about 22 ley lines radiating from Round Loaf, which is the second largest mound in England, the largest being Silbury Hill. Okay, there's four other figures associated with it as well. There's the Garstang Dog, which is up there the dog again. There's the dragon, which its tail seems to sort of settle on to St. Michael's on wire, and the flame goes right across towards Pendle Hill. There's the whale, and yeah. There's also a phoenix there, but I think that might not actually be a, a figure related to this. It just might be pure chance that that shape just happens to be there. <coughs> And also, also notice as well, I can show you later on the other map, that most of the zodiacs that have been discovered fall on a 96 mile radius great circle. Its center is at the um, Coventry zodiac, which Coventry comes from the, the name Coventry, which is obviously a more historic place. <coughs> Also, I think this, that this could represent the sword in the stone because the top end of the zodiac 
basically. The top end of the zodiac represents, seems to be the shape of a sword haft, sword handle, and the rest of it could be the blade, and the great circle could be the stone. So this might be the legendary sword in the stone, which I've discovered. So does that make me king of England? I doubt it. <laughs> and also, it's also suggested that Lancashire gets its name from Lancelot's shire, so there's more Arthurian connections there. And I should imagine people from around this area would also know that King Edward's school, the, uh, the badge has the fist holding a sword aloft. Okay, a little bit of story about how I discovered it. I was um, back in the 70s, I was looking for ley lines around the northwest of England, marking ley points on a map, which is these sorts of things prehistoric mounds, marked stones old circular moats, castle keeps, ancient beacon points, and then there's the confirmation points, which are all these different things, churches, old crosses, aligned roads, fords, hilltop tree groups, trees with ancient names, of which there are quite a few, named hill notches, crossroads with ancient names, dog's legs in roads, junks and shelf tracks, camp entrenchments, islands in ponds, or ponds themselves. So I was looking for these around the Bolton area, and I was, mar well, I was marking these lay points all around the, the map of the northwest, and I noticed that the stars, that the, the, church, the points that I'd marked around the Bolton area seemed to look like similar to the stars of the constellation Leo. So I got out my trusty astronomy book, checked, and it was fairly accurately matched, so I thought, well, if if Leo's there, maybe the adjacent signs were there. And there was me thinking it's going to be a circle or an ellipse, so I started looking for just the stars at this point. And I found one sign after another, and I realised that this wasn't um, an ellipse, it wasn't a circle, it was sort of some were going that way and some were going back that way. So I thought, well, this is different. Anyway, then, after having read about the um, Glastonbury Zodiac, well, maybe the shapes are there as well. So I started following the tracks, roads, rivers, whatever, and I found the shapes as well. Again, fairly accurate. Anyway, I will go into the um, shapes now. Carry on. The Garstang dog. Can anybody make that out? There's the nose of the dog there. There's its body and its little tail there. Um, there's a Somewhere around here, there's a little hill called Wag Hill. This is Garstang. That's um, Greenhouse Castle there. And that obviously marks out the um, constellation of um, Canis Major, which is Sirius. So that marks out Sirius. The dragon. Now, this is, this is pretty noticeable on um, aerial photographs. You can, it shows up very clearly on your photographs. There's the head there, a little bit of a horn there, the mouth, going down the back, a little wing there, another little wing there, and the tail goes right down to St. Michael's on wire. And again, it's the um, sign of Draco, the constellation of Draco. And this here is um, Beacon Fell. Now, the significance of the dog and the dragon in ancient folklore, some of the uh, tunnels coming out of the Great Pyramid at Giza, one points towards Sirius, another towards Orion, another one here towards um, the constellation of Draco. So there's some significance there, I should imagine, as well. Exactly what I don't know because I haven't done enough research into it yet. The whale. This is local here. This Kirkham there. This is the mouth, fin, and that sits back there. It goes on out towards Preston. Now, there is a constellation of Cetus the whale, and these stars fairly well match it, but again, I'm not sure whether that is part of it or not, but I'm saying for now that it is. Okay, now all the, got all the, um, Zodiac signs in sequence now, and they are in the correct sequence. Aries, the ram. This is um, Broughton, that's Broughton there. 
Broughton Castle, I think, represents the eye. There's the, the head, the little ear, the body, and the four feet, and the little tail. And this is the main A6 running along here. And again, that's just got the stars of Aries the Ram. Now, would, I mean, I would say that's a fairly good representation of a ram. Now, this one is very difficult to make out. It's um, Taurus the bull. It's upside down. The head is down here somewhere. And there's, a, there's one leg, there's another leg, another leg there, and the body's around Preston. Now, coincidence here, I was living in Preston at the time I discovered it, and that was my sun sign in my horoscope. And the first sign I discovered was Leo which was a rising sign in my horoscope, so maybe there's some significance there as well. Also, related to um, Taurus, coming back to Taurus, there's a lot of pubs in and around the Preston area with bull in their name. The Black Bull, which is on Black Bull Lane, which is one of the lakes. The old Black Bull in the town centre. Bull and Royal Hotel ancient picture of that. The white bull down at uh, Watmerdale and the black bull at Bamber Bridge. In fact I used to live up that street. Now the Pleiades, they're a group of stars very close to Taurus, associated with Taurus. And I've noticed as well the churches in Leyland seem to mirror seem to be a mirror image of the stars of the main stars of the Pleiades. In fact, there's even a pub called the Original Seven Stars. Although they do use as their um, pub sign the plough, but I think they probably got that wrong. It probably is the Seven Sisters, the Pleiades. Coming on to Gemini. Again, this is upside down. There's, these are the a boy and a girl. That's, that's the girl there. That's her head. That's her body and her feet. And there's the boy there, his head, body and feet going up to there. And they are bored. Their, their head is almost next to um, Round Love, which is there. And there's 22 ley lines radiating from that, so it must be a very important spot. It's way up in the hills, Angles aren't more. You're probably not, you're from that neck of the woods, aren't you? No? You, you're, from, you're from Blackburn, uh, Bolton Way, aren't you? No, it's from somebody else. Anyway, that's... Uh, I've been up there, it's quite an interesting spot. You've got incredible views all over from there. The interesting point is that this seems to be the focal point of the whole zodiac because all the signs north of it are pointing south. All the signs south of it are pointing north. Cancer. This is unique in this zodiac because in all of the other zodiacs, cancer is represented by something other than a crab. Like it's a ship in the Glastonbury one, it's Diana in the Blackburn Zodiac, in the Pendle Zodiac. But you can make out a crab quite clearly. There's the claws, there's the main body, Horridge there. This is Winter Hill, round about there. That's Winter Hill, there's all the masts. Okay, going on to Leo, this is the one I found first. You can see the clear crook of the stars of Leo and then the, the shape of the body and the actual lion's head, mane, coming right down to its tail there. And this is, this is Bolton, Bolton Town Centre there. Now, we're getting into Greater Manchester now, so a lot of the things might be distorted by later roadworks, road building. But this is um, Virgo. You can clearly see it's, it's a woman in sort of Celtic, traditional Celtic dress. There's, there's the head, bonnet, face, <coughs> little cape, the dress, and a little foot <coughs> popping out from the dress. You can see it Eccles, Winton there, uh, Pendlebury. Libra. Usually it's represented as scales, but sometimes it's represented as a bird. So this, this could be either. I mean, it's hard to tell because there's so much building there. There's all these great big 
stuff built across the moss there. Miss Stratford, there's the head of the bird or the point of the scales, who, who knows what it is. But it could be either. And again, the stars representing the stars of Libra. Scorpio. Now this one's very distorted because of the Carrington Moss um, development. But you can clearly see the sting in the tail there coming all the way up round. And there's one of the um, front claws and there's the other one up there. But a lot of this has been destroyed because of all this Carrington Moss development over there. Sagittarius. This is going quicker than I thought, isn't it? Okay, there's the head of the Sagittarius. Um, Sagittarius is traditionally represented as um, as a archer, sometimes as a centaur, which is this is as a man's body, man's head on a horse's body. That's, that's also distorted as well. The back there's distorted because somebody had gone and went and built an airport right there. Massive, great big airport. Don't know who did that, but they've ruined it. Um, there's also the bow here, with an arrow going out. And if you follow the line of the arrow, <coughs> it takes you straight towards Pendle Hill. Now to Capricorn. Fish-tailed goat. There's the horn, there's the head, the eye there. This is round Wilmslow, with the main body, <coughs> front leg, and then there's the fish tail at the back. That's uh, not a fairly good one, that is, that's not really been destroyed, because I think there's less development out there once you're into Cheshire. Aquarius. Now this is different in that Aquarius is represented by, it's supposed to be the water carrier, but this is represented by a hare, and a bird. Now around, this is all the Liege area, somewhere around here. Um, yeah, there's all, it's around all the Liege. And there's the legend there of the wizard, again with the Arthurian connection. Um, the legend is that um, there's the wizard and the knights of the round table are interred at Old Liege, awaiting the return of the golden age, which we all know is the age of Aquarius. Hence, that's where it is. And uh, the hair, I think, represents um, renewal, like spring, new beginnings. And the bird, I think, Merlin could transform himself into a bird, according to legend. So that could represent Merlin. I haven't got the slide here, I don't think, but there is a pub in Alderley Edge called The Wizard. I thought I had it on here, but I don't. <coughs> now we're coming on to Pisces. It's traditionally represented as two fish, <coughs> but this seems to be a whale and a fish. There's the whale, there's the, the whale, there's its head, coming down to its tail. And these are the stars of... And there's a place there called... I can't, I can't make it out. But there's a few fish-related place names around there. There's a second... Oh, sorry, that was a fish. This is the dolphin. You can clearly make out the dolphin's nose, little eye, and it's going around to its tail here. That's a congleton, which I suppose could be another fish name, congleton, conga, eel. <coughs> now back to Randloff. That is the picture of it from the satellite maps. You can see it's it's got quite a few paths, tracks radiating from it, but there's also 22 ley lines coming from it, and it is a major um, point in the countryside. Like I said before, it's the second largest mound in England. Silbury Hill, which is a very important mound. Is the largest down in Wiltshire, near Stonehenge, Avebury area. That's a close-up of it. They have excavated it, and the, some artefacts were found, and they're in the Bolton Museum, but I can't remember what they were, but it is a major 
be me. These are some of the other zodiacs that I that I know of. And a lot of those do fall on that great circle that I mentioned. I think that's it. Sorry, it's quicker than I thought. Thanks very much, Okay, any questions, anybody? Yeah, what, what was the focal point with all these zodiacs? What was it focusing on? It's round love. It's, it's that, focusing on round Yeah, all the... All the um, <laughs> All the signs north of it are facing south, and all the signs fa south of it are facing north. And that is that is the focal point, yeah. No, the the centre of the big circle, the ninety six mile circle, is Coventry. This is on Angles Arc Moor. It's between sort of Bolton and Chorley. Yeah, yeah. I mean, once you're up there, get up there to Round Love. It's quite a trek from the main road to get to it. And it's not always easy to find, but once you get up there, on a clear day, you can see for miles. You can see the Lake District, you can see the North Wales Hills, you can see Blackpool, Preston, into Manchester. No, that's Winter Hill. Yeah. Um, no, this is this is just a great big mound in the middle of in the middle of the moor. It would, yeah, yeah. Are the depictions of the um, different star signs, are they made up of, uh, by roads or uh, are natural pictures part of them as well? Like uh, roads, tracks, some rivers. I mean, the, uh, the tail of the dragon, part of it follows the, um, the Wire River. Supposedly, well, this knowledge should have uh, been passed down through people who are privy to it. Yeah. Because this obviously isn't the mm. source. Well, I think this is probably about 2,000 years old, no older, because it's got the signs in what we know as the traditional sequence, starting with Aries. And that, uh, that sequence only sort of came into popular culture round about, well, the beginning of the age of Pisces. But we're, build, we're building motorways and accommodations, whatever, some of yeah. them have disappeared. My, my point is, yeah. uh, the people that are aware of this would have perhaps replaced it in uh, modern architecture or modern street planning or... I don't know. I need to do a hell of a lot more research on it. I, I, the traffic centre, like mm -hmm. you said before about the, the Stratford area, you know the traffic centre. Mm -hmm. If you look at it from an aerial view, it's definitely, it's like a phoenix. It's, it is a phoenix. Oh, right. I hadn't noticed that. Thanks for that. I, was, uh, I think this is absolutely mind-boggling to me because we're talking about something that can really only be seen from hundreds of miles up. Well, not hundreds of miles up, but thousands of feet in the air. Mm. Well, the dragon... Very much like the, the Nazca ones. Mm. And the, the Glastonbury mm. one, I read about the Glastonbury one 40 years ago, and Jeffrey Ash wrote about the Glastonbury one. Yeah. What was the conclusion that they came to as to who, who was behind it? Is it Celtic, or is it three Celtics? I, to be honest, I'm not sure. It probably what, is. What are, you, what are your own opinions as to, to why the reasons for it? Who would have built it? Yeah, what's the oh, reason such for a, it? What's, what do you think it's for? I mean, the, the picture can't, cannot be seen. Well, I've got a feeling... Unless you get high. I've got a feeling that this might be an astro, astrological representation of a, a specific day. I need to... If that represents the sun, which is the focal point of it, then if I can find representations of the planets within this it's, thing, then that could give me some sort of exact date. Doesn't it all pre presuppose an incredible civilization in the past? Mm. That it does, yeah. That their ideas mm. of the, uh, Because I'm reading a book at the moment that's literally blowing my mind because it, it's talking about pre-Sumerian knowledge being handed down from a, a past civilization that's been mm. destroyed and that they had incredible... By very, but this has been mm. done by a, a, a chap called Joseph Farrell in that mm. in his book. And he, he's talking about um, the knowing the speed of light, mm -hmm. incredible definitions of, of time and distance and length and, and weight, mm -hmm. which was needed to kickstart a new civilization yeah. on the earth after a, ca a cataclysm which has destroyed mm -hmm. the previous one. It's talking about Lemuria. Pardon? It's talking about Lemuria, no. Yeah. Uh, I don't think that's no. been mentioned as far as. I mean, this book, which has been lent to me by a oh, fellow who usually is here, Jez. I don't think he's in, even he's ready, but I'm going to have to thank him for that and take it a bit longer and do a, a, a proper perusal mm -hmm. on this book. But it seems to me that they're talking about an incredible civilization that 
Uh, well, call it an Atlantis, but you're not supposed to mention Atlantis. Well, to be honest, I, I was once told by a clairvoyant in Los Angeles when I was travelling with a guy who claimed to be from the Hollow Earth right. that uh, in a previous life I was the last high priestess of Atlantis, the Princess Mayra, and I was the one that destroyed Atlantis. So. <laughs> No. <laughs> it's all my fault. Okay. Thank you.